Okay, so now we're starting to get into the stockholders equity portion of the balance sheet. Heretofore, we've been discussing uh, really uh, mostly current liabilities. And so as we move into that section, we need to understand um, what the stockholders equity section is is made of and we need to understand uh, in doing so we need to have we, we need to kind of uh, straddle the line between talking about liabilities term liabilities especially and um, what is referred to as paid in capital so bear with me on these questions and hopefully this will all become clear if you have seen the uh, PowerPoint presentation video, this is going to make a whole lot more sense than if you have not. Okay, but the first question that we have here is just asking us to uh, distinguish somewhat between stockholders and bondholders. Okay, um, and let's just see. It says stockholders differ from bondholders in that bondholders are company owners well what do you think i think this is an absolutely incorrect statement and it is an absolutely incorrect statement stockholders are company older uh company owners bondholders are creditors so when a company uh raises money by issuing bonds they have created a liability primarily a long-term liability you own a bond you are a creditor of a company not an owner so let's go ahead and put an X by choice a uh, let's see choice B it says stockholders have superior rights to bondholders in the event of a company liquidation this is also uh, an incorrect statement bondholders are creditors and bondholders have superior rights to company assets uh, in the event of a liquidation. So this statement is completely backwards and as such is also not our answer. Choice C, it says bondholders are creditors whereas stakeholders are owners. Well, if you've been paying attention at all, you know that that is a true and correct answer so let's just go ahead and circle it right now but let's look at d and find out why it's wrong it says bondholders have superior rights to stockholders as to dividends the reason this is wrong is because bondholders do not get dividends only stockholders can get dividends bondholders have superior rights to residual assets in the event of a company liquidation but bondholders never receive dividends so this is incorrect. Again, C is our correct answer. Moving along, it says, if common stock is issued for an amount greater than our value, the excess would increase what? The excess would increase. Well, this is a little bit tricky, but let's think about this now cash well the reason that this that the answer is not cash okay is because we're referring to the amount greater than par value the entire amount the entire amount will increase cash but when we break it down like this the reason cash is wrong is because yes the amount greater than par value but also the par value amount of cash uh, would increase cash so Technically, this could be considered an answer, but it is not our best choice, okay? Our next choice says retained earnings. Retained earnings, retained earnings come from net income on the income statement, okay? Retained earnings is a component of stockholders' equity, but what we're dealing with when we talk about common stock or preferred stock for that matter, is the paid in capital portion of the stockholders equity section that is a wrong answer incorrect answer um, 
Choice C, paid in capital in excess of par, greater than excess. You see the connection there? So paid in capital in excess of par value, common stock to be a little bit more uh, specific is going to be our correct answer. Choice D, legal capital. Um, for our purposes, uh, this is essentially, it's not a made up term, but for our purposes, it is essentially a made up term. Okay. So last question, it says Logan Company issues 70,000 shares of $50 par value uh, preferred stock for cash at $60 per share. Recording the transaction will consist of, and you may use T accounts to solve. I would recommend that you do use T accounts to solve. So we have to determine which accounts are impacted here. And the first one that is impacted is cash. So let's go ahead and make a T account for cash. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 70,000 shares times $60. And if we execute that out, we're going to come up with $4.2 million. Okay. And I'm going to record that over on the left side because cash is an asset and assets go up with a debit. Debit should be associated with the word left, credit associated with the word right, okay? We have another account here called preferred stock. Or preferred stock par, if you choose, okay? Um, both uh, paid in capital accounts or stock accounts as well as retained earnings have normal credit balances. So what we need to do here is we need to take this same 70,000 number of shares, but we're gonna multiply it by only the par value. And that's, if we do that, we're gonna come up with $3.5 million. We're going to plot that Get my dollar signs in here. We're going to plot that on the right side of our T account uh, because, as I just told you, paid in capital stock accounts have normal credit balances. And let's see here, I'm going to drop this down a little bit. And we're going to have, I'm going to abbreviate as well, um, paid in capital excess of par preferred stock. Bear with me, I'm going to fix this real quick. Excess of par preferred stock. Okay, so we got to take the 60 minus 50 and that gives us 10. So if we take our 70,000 shares times the difference between 60 and 50, that's $10. And if we execute that out, it's gonna be 700,000. And again, this is a paid in capital equity account. So we're gonna plot that $700,000 over here on the right side. Now, let's see if we've done this correctly. If we add the 3.5 million preferred stock and the $700,000 uh, paid in capital excess of par, those two figures come to 4.2 million and that matches our debit of $4.2 million. Regarding the transaction, uh, or I'm sorry, recording the transaction will consist of a debit to cash for 4.2 million, uh, a credit, to preferred stock par for 3.5 million and paid in capital excess of par preferred stock $700,000. Now you may wonder, why didn't he just make journal entries to show us this? this video is being made for a freshman level survey of a class and um, we do not require actual journal entries. 
uh, to be made in that class. So uh, the T accounts show you what is happening absent an actual journal entry.